Welcome to the bold analysis. The reason why William Samoy Ruto decided to climb down and uh, call for that bipartisan approach, uh, that bipartisan uh, talks with Ray Lodinga, I want to repeat, it was never in the interest of political stability or economic stability. It was in the interest of just making sure that that mass action do not escalate because in the fullness of time, there was clearest indication that it would become a full-blown revolution. And by the way, if you remember the Monday, before El Odinga called it off, they were, the daggers were drawn. People had already spoken about it. And clearly, Monday was going to be the mother of all demonstrations. The reason why William Ruto called off that demonstration was because of what is happening now about uh, salaries delay. Everyone would have gone to street. If I would have called that mass action, it would have gone to street. And because that was the trap, I think the Azimila Umoja team sat down and decided that, look here, we can't fall into that trap. The moment Azimil team went silent, the government team UDA side were deployed in different parts of the country, shouting on top of the sunroof of their cars that Trila is looking for Nusum Kate. Now let me tell you, the Azimil Omoja team are saying they are resuming the people's barazas, number one, Number two, they will initiate first a town hall meeting on Thursday, 13th, then 16th on Sunday, there will be a people's baraza in Kamkunji. What is your take on it? Why do you think Rhinodinga is going, is resuming these people's barazas? <laughs> And do you think William Ruto is very comfortable with that? Kindly subscribe to our channel, click the notification bell, and like our video. Thank you very much for those who are sharing. And I said, my position is here, that the rallies were called off, and William Ruto team wanted them to be called off because they knew what was coming. And it was a ploy to silence Raila. But after that, you know, it came to the, dis the disappointment, disappointment of many, I think supporters have been asking, so what's the next course of action or what is the end game? Azimil remarked that in the people's baraza, they will be, it will enable the party to explain to the people where they were and the upcoming course of action following the suspension of the protests. Now, let me tell you a very uh, wild reason here. I think the Odinga team have realized that uh, people wanted that mass action. And because it was never fought, maybe there is some sort of some fatigue that was coming. So my clearest indication here is that um, is here, is they have realized that um, people really wanted to look at it, uh, wanted to see how that will play out and what will be the end game. And uh, this is very critical because it just came hours after Kenya Kwanza unveiled a juvenile members of parliament legislators as part of that uh, bipartisan team. Is it a coincidence that the Raila team are speaking about calling the Nairobi meeting just hours after that list was out? I understand there was a meeting that was held by the leadership of Azimio today in the morning. Immediately that list was released. And I've just been trying to track uh, the reactions of um, UDA bloggers and what Azimio bloggers are saying. And there seems to be a general perception. And I think I looked at um, the demo like saying that street, we might head back to the street way. We might head back to the street. I've seen, I've seen um, the demo Olekina talking about it. I am a bit convinced on these four grounds that has informed the decision by Azimio to call these meetings. 
Right Odinga has realized. Sorry that he has realized too late. Some of us realized that thing from the word. I realized this, I mentioned before I went home. But the Rain Odinga has realized that Tutu is not honest and serious about that bipartisan engagement. And it's either meant to flop, to flop, or it will flop. Maybe it is designed to flop. Probably looking at it, it is just designed to flop. Heading back to the people is the option. I know they sat down and looked at that team. They looked at those politicians. And um, of course, we're waiting for a bit of an approach on how it was going to be held, it was going to be done. And as well, a team have just checked the names. You no, know, on the other end, they've presented Boni Halwale, my friend Boni, uh, my friend Esio Kenyuri, and uh, Mwingi Mutuse, uh, Justice, uh, legal, the one of the Legal and Justice Affairs Committee, then the women rep from Taita Taveta, and uh, Hilary Segei, Bomet Senator. So, as we have realized, too late, but some of us knew this thing that happened. You know what as Mio has, is normally presenting, what they've been presenting, according to me, has been what, according to me, cannot be canvassed in totality in Parliament. It has to be done from those who are inside Parliament and also those who are outside Parliament. We know that uh, the, the House, the, 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 the role of the legislators is representation, of course. But even uh, clergy have a voice. Civil society organizations have a voice. If it is representation, then why is it that when it comes to a reconstitution of IBC, there is a representative from Supkem, from the, from the Christian wing, from the Law Society of Kenya, Political Parties Liaison Committee. There, there are a bit of other players that come into play. Now, this is what I'm seeing. Um, Azimilo Omoji wants to shape the public expectations public opinion over the expectations of the bipartisan team. In fact, they will narrow the irreducible minimums in the public. This is what it is. I know William Ruto team, they have said they want to do things in the confines of the law. And of course, there is that which can be discussed by that bipartisan committee, which according to them is IBC. Now, Azimio and Umoja on the other end are looking at a holistic thing, a very holistic engagement that touches on all those other areas. So just looking at that, um, I know that maybe Raila have also tried to engage even the background behind the scenes. And what they want to do is to shape the public opinion so that the Kenyans will expect, and as Mila as Mila Modia will uh, supporters will expect nothing short of servers. A topic that William Bruton and the team are ignoring, are ignoring like a plague. So the reducible minimum on uh, Zimila Modia, the question of servers, they will try to shape the public opinion. Now, what will be said in those podiums and those meetings? will clearly show you that there is that which Azimiel Omoja is expecting. And that expectation, if it's not met, then they'll find a ground to reject that bipartisan. You'll not be, I'll not be shocked to see members of that bipartisan committee attending these meetings and actually speaking about what they expect or what is being done. Now, Ryan has realized that this is the time to amplify failures of UDA government. And when you amplify the failures, this is the time to get the public traction. William Ruto is fixed and the government is in a mess as far as paying the salaries is concerned. There are a lot of ills that have been committed bordering on uh, extrajudicial issues like the police brutality that happened at just the last mass action. Some of these issues happened, but then in quick succession, Arailo Dinga then called off the protest. 
uh, even though part of the agreement was to make sure that the cases are dropped and of course cases were dropped and even some medical bills that probably was co were covered by the Zmelo Moja team. But this is the time to amplify those stories and to amplify the failures of government, especially one serious one like this one of salaries. I can tell you the more Azmila Umoja will be speaking and pressing government on this issue of salaries, the more government will be on top and will have to react. So they've realized that those civil servants that don't have the salary will probably listen to what Azmila is saying. And that is why I am uh, persuaded that Azmila is heading back to those people's baraza. Lastly, I don't see, I see them, they don't want to maintain, they want to maintain the euphoria of Azmila supporters that was created. There is a hype that was created and that hype then managed to consolidate the supporters around the Azmila Umoja ideology. Truth be said, after William Ruto um, and Ray Lodinga climbed down and the negotiations started, one of the activities in the background that is going on is political mobilization under the UDA party. So there is political mobilization known as, I don't know, registration of members and this and that that is going on. So on that end, Azimu Lamoja are also not losing their eyes on the ball. That there must be mobilization. And they are doing this to make sure that they also mobilize, mobilize the people so that in any case it doesn't work, it will be very easy to transit. Say that, you know, we told them, we tried, we told them, they refused, we get back to the people. So according to me, it's about maintaining the contact with the people. Uh, something that will really give William Ruto sleepless nights. Um, I'm really waiting at this. I'll try my best to attend. Uh, I'll try to attend the, that people's that, that that town hall meeting and even that people's baraza, uh, so that I I get uh, we get into what exactly the royal team are uh, up to. It will give us uh, a tone of what exactly is going on. There is a lot that is going on. William Ruto has let out the team, and they are doing propaganda on this thing. So this time, it's a time that then um, William Ruto is campaigning going on with the campaign so why not let's see how this will play out and uh thank you very much for watching